Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to How to Become an Animator. I'm Sir Wade, and today we are answering a question that a ton of you have been asking for a while, something that I have had tons of questions about myself. What kind of computer is best for animation? Now, animation is this super time-consuming process, and computers are a super money-consuming thing that you have to buy sometimes. Unfortunately for us, a lot of the times, especially if you're working in 3D, the software requires a pretty decent computer. How decent depends on your needs, depends on your budget, and those are all things you have to factor in when you're picking a new machine, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, if you're gonna buy it, if you're gonna build it. We're gonna talk about all that today. We're gonna answer those questions as best we can. But let's talk about computers, and depending on who you are and what you need, this video is gonna lead you in a number of different directions. Now, I don't know your level of computer comprehension, so we're gonna kind of blaze through some of the things that are in a computer to talk about what they are useful for in the context of animation. So let's do it. First thing to figure out, form factor. Desktop, laptop. Desktops, more bang for your buck. You usually can cram a lot more power into these things, but they're not very mobile at all, not portable. Laptops, obviously very portable, but there is a limit to how much power you can have in these things. And because you're paying for the screen and all these extra features and things, sometimes it can be more expensive than its kind of desktop counterpart. So something to consider. Next is operating system. Not very important for the context of this video, but something for you to figure out and figure out your preferences. Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you use. Generally, you can do a lot more customization over on the Windows side, but there are some options on Mac as well. We're not gonna go there, moving on. Next is kind of the meat of the computer, the main stuff that you're gonna be looking for. There's the processor, there's the RAM or system memory. You have your storage or your hard drive, potentially a graphics card if you're going desktop. Sometimes laptops have that as well. And then you've got ports and other features, accessories, things like that to consider. So to keep this brief, a processor is pretty much kind of the core of the computer, the brain, the thing that's going to do all the computational work of figuring out what's going on with whatever you're doing. Usually this means that the better the processor, the more complex, the more intense the tasks are you can handle on your computer. Processors that aren't as good are gonna have a really hard time figuring out what you're doing. They won't be able to move as quickly and sometimes maybe not at all if the processor's really terrible. Now, quick example, I only use Intel processors. I've only ever used Intel processors and I don't know anything about the company AMD and what they make, so I'll be ignoring the Threadripper and all that other stuff. Sorry, not sorry. So, Intel processors, you've got things like the Celeron and the Pentium, you would never use those. The i3, i5, i7, i9 is now a thing. You've got like Xeon processors, those are different and weird and we're not gonna use those. i7 is when you start to get to media creation. You've got photo editing on i5, you got video editing on an i7. That's kind of the goal for 3D stuff. You got the i9s and those things are pretty monstrous. So you wanna aim for the i7, i9 if you really got the budget, try to go the i7 or higher for 3D animation. Ah, I can't keep these on, it's just, it's not happening. Next you have your RAM or random access memory. Basically RAM is your computer's ability to multitask, to keep track of all the different things going on at once. Now in a program like Maya, that means more geometry. It can, it can handle that. It can keep all that data somewhere as you work on it and move around the screen. Like RAM is holding all that data in place. Some programs need enough RAM to work in the first place, but the more RAM you have, the easier it is as a system load to have lots of stuff open and lots of things going on in each of those programs. So more RAM is usually better, but RAM can get expensive, so don't go overboard and just buy 128 gigs of RAM when you don't need it. A safe minimum for most of your computing needs is eight. For 3D animation, 16 is always recommended, but if you spend a lot of time animating, and I mean like for work, it's professional, it's, it's what you do, you probably want to go to 32 if you can if you can swing it. But most people would say 16 is probably the minimum you want to go. Next up is your storage space or your hard drive. Two types of hard drive. You've got HDDs or spinning disk hard drives, think of like a CD with a reader. Not as fast, doesn't last as long, but a lot cheaper for more space than a solid state drive or an SSD. These are thinner, giving laptops the ability to be a lot more slim. It's one of the fastest ways to make your computer more expensive, but it's also something to make it last a lot longer, and these are so much faster. So when you turn on a computer and it opens up fast, it's probably using a solid state drive. So if you want fast boot speeds, software to open quickly, your files to be accessed really rapidly, you wanna be on, on solid state drives. And if you're on a desktop, you may need to do multiple hard drives. There's a whole thing to talk about there. This is a really, really big difference in speed for everyday stuff. So graphics cards are tricky, and what you'll be looking for here is called the GPU, graphics processing unit or something. Now on a laptop, you may not have options. You may not have a graphics card in your computer. You might have a dedicated graphics card in your computer. It just kinda depends on what you're getting. On a, on a desktop, you're gonna have a graphics card. You're gonna need something good. Now I'm gonna stick to the NVIDIA cards because again, that's what I know stuff about. For the NVIDIA cards, there's a few categories to keep in mind. You've got Quadro cards, and then you've got GeForce cards, which come in GTX and now RTX cards. If you don't know what I'm talking about, try to stick with me. If you know what I'm talking about, here's what I've been able to gather so far. The Quadro cards generally seem to maintain more detail and data preservation over frame rate, where the GeForce cards will favor frame rate 
over the detail stuff. The Quadro cards are great for simulating things and just kind of data stuff, where it doesn't matter how quickly the frames go by, it's really focused on giving you the, the most accurate representation of textures and you know calculation-based stuff. There's also now the RTX, which is a ray tracing series. So it's more future proof, that's their whole thing. And if you're spending time in VR, that's also a good option. At least that's what I've found. But if you know something I don't, please drop in the comments and help people learn this stuff because there's not a lot of resources on this part of it for us. So my recommendation would be probably go RTX and then Quadro. I haven't seen a comparison between RTX and Quadro though at their upper levels. The last category is ports and features. And this is just kind of a weird miscellaneous category where you have to figure out, do you need USB-C? Does your phone have USB-C? Or do you want to stick with USB 3, 3.0, 3.1? different speeds of cables. There's USB 2, which you hope there's less of now because they're not the blue ones and they're not as fast and there's all this stuff. And if you're on a laptop, it goes deeper. Do you have a backlit keyboard? Do you want one? What about the resolution of your screen? Do you have an HDMI out? Is it a mini HDMI? Do you have anything to plug that into a projector with? You're gonna have to buy a dongle or another adapter. All of these things cost money, but ultimately are going to affect the way you work. So you've got to figure out what are the most important things to you to build into your computer, whether you're buying it or you're putting it together physically yourself. And if that's the case, and you gotta talk about motherboards and all this other stuff, where I probably can't help you very much with like motherboards. I didn't build my computer, I had it built for me. So transitioning from like the dense information part of this video to what have I used personally and what can I tell you about that hopefully will help you. Now, when I first went to college, I had a PC gaming laptop. It was this Lenovo laptop and it served me well. I also took my first Maya 3D class in it. This thing was heavy, but it had all the ports I needed. It was a really good computer. i7, 16 gigs of memory, and I took the sticker off, but it was some kind of Nvidia graphics card dedicated inside this thing. And this is what I initially made all my stuff on. Now, when I switched to computer science, the school I was at required us to have Xcode, which is only available, it's a, it's a developing thing only for Mac computers. So I went from this to this, and this was my MacBook Pro that I used all the way through Animation Mentor. So I've, I've used both of these for 3D animation, and I went through all of Animation Mentor for the most part using that computer. But it was starting to get really slow after a while because I had these really heavy character rigs with the faces and all these things I could do with them. I felt like I was wasting so much time due to the computer being slow versus me being slow, and I couldn't get faster because of the equipment. So I decided to buy a desktop computer, and if you saw my old workspace video, this is the desktop computer I eventually bought. I watched some DreamWorks behind the scenes video, learned that this is what they used. So at the time I bought this, custom made it from the HP website, picked what I thought would be best, but I didn't really know. Now the specs of that workstation were the Intel Xeon processor, which I thought was gonna be this fancy thing. Turns out it's more for like rendering architecture and server stuff, I don't know. It was a 3.5 gigahertz processor. If that means anything to you, it had 16 gigs of RAM. The graphics card I bought with this computer was the NVIDIA Quadro K2200, which was because I thought I'd do a lot more rendering and simulation type stuff than I actually ended up doing. Ultimately, I ended up getting an Oculus Rift, and so I needed VR capabilities, and that graphics card was not going to support VR. So I decided to get a GeForce GTX 1080 card, which is a really, really good, basically gaming card with high frame rates and a lot of power for VR. And actually, I didn't notice a huge difference when I was animating, so I never had a reason to like swap back in the Quattro card. I kept it around in case I thought I would, but I never did. And the computer worked fairly well, but nothing like stood out as like, oh my gosh, this is lightning fast, but it was quite a bit faster and more powerful than my laptop, that's for sure. So I tested so many laptops in the last like year and a half, two years, kind of in preparation for this. Now the first laptop I tested was the Microsoft Surface laptop, and it, it didn't do a very good job for me handling Premiere and simple video projects. So I returned to that and I ended up getting the Surface Book 2. The Surface Book 2 laptop is supposed to have a dedicated graphics card in the base, Hardware issues didn't end up working for me. It really, it wasn't great. It it was supposed to be great, but I never used the touch screen ever. And I didn't really use the pen feature. I had enough hardware issues with it, like not knowing it was connected. It wasn't taking advantage of anything and the base had to offer when you put the screen on it. It didn't work for me. So eventually I switched to the new Mac Pro. This is the most recent release. I think the 2018 or 2019. This is the new MacBook Pro. I went all out. It's the i9 with 32 gigs of RAM and I got a terabyte of solid state hard drive space. This thing has done a fairly good job. It'll handle most things in Maya. I did um, a lot of Maya animation on this, a lot of freelance work with this computer. However, for some reason, this thing sucks at rendering. It, it literally cannot use Arnold. And I'm not saying like, it's bad at it. It just won't do it. It won't render with Arnold and nothing I, nothing I can do will fix that. And I don't know why. So anytime I needed to render something, I would essentially put my files in Dropbox, Dropbox it, send it back home, and then I would remote desktop into that computer 
and I would like use Maya on that computer to render it in Arnold back into Dropbox to download on this computer. It was a mess. On top of that, I also ended up getting an iPad because I wanted to do more drawing and more stuff on the go. This is a great option for drawing and various things, but this is not a computer. It doesn't run Maya. This is not full software, but it doesn't matter because after doing all of that, the answer was still clear that I needed a more powerful desktop computer. And that's when I discovered Puget Systems. Now where most companies, you pick the parts you want and they build it for you. What they do is really smart because for people like me and for a lot of you guys out there who don't know like how these things all work exactly together, you call them and you tell them, hey, here's what I do, here's the software I use, and here's what I want. And they say, oh, then you want these pieces. And they tell you which parts accomplish the goals that you tell them, so you it's, it's much better. Because I looked at their website and there was stuff for like streaming, VR, modeling, CAD, rendering, there's all this stuff in here. So if you're going for like an After Effects computer, Photoshop computer, there's Maya, Cinema 4D, all these things were in here and I got super excited. I was like, oh, they're gonna have the answers. So I clicked here and then I thought, well, I also do After Effects and I do other things. So anyway, I emailed them and I said, hey, here's a list of everything I want my computer to do. I don't even know where to start. Can you help me? And they were amazing. For like a year, we worked on it. And it didn't take a year because they're slow. It took a year because I didn't have the money yet and I was trying to figure out as things came out and new processors were coming out and the graphics cards changed, like technology evolved so quickly. But what's really cool about them is not that just that they build computers, is that they test everything and all the tests they run. They'll put all the computers together, they'll run all these different things with every program, and then they'll publish all of it online for free. So you can go look at it all right now. So if you jump over to Maya, there's a recommended system for Maya, and this is using the 2017 version. This is showing you different processor speeds. It'll tell you how many cores are in the computer, the speeds of the processors. Anyways, pretty much all of last year, I was saving up and planning to buy a computer from them. And every time new stuff would come out, I'd email and be like, hey, new stuff is out. Should I be changing my build? And they'd say, oh yeah, you should actually get this graphics card and so on. So we put it all together and now I have a new computer. I have a new system that I've been using for about a month and a half now. I had been using my old computer for so long and I just thought like, yeah, it's probably not as fast as it could be, but that's just what I was used to. Oh, I was in like the dark ages. I was in a cave writing with chalk or rocks or like poo or something. I had no idea. But now I'm like in the future with like minority report things on my hands and I'm just like swooping things by and like it's all futuristic. Everything is so much faster. It makes a huge difference. So here it is. These are the specs of my now current computer. The computer that I designed for animation is an Intel Core i9 990K 3.6 gigahertz, eight core processor. It makes a huge difference when I'm in Maya and I'm moving stuff around in the viewport. This thing shortens the time that it takes for when I grab something and move it for the computer to actually do that rather than me clicking and dragging and then waiting. So this computer is pretty much as fast as I am. I haven't yet run into any situations where it's not fast enough. So that's been awesome. RAM, I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM, which has been the greatest thing ever because my old desktop had 16 and I was constantly running out of memory. The graphics card in this computer, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. So the new ray tracing graphics cards with eight gigs of video memory. I don't feel like I've really put this to the test yet. So I don't have a lot to say about like what this has done, but I'm currently testing this graphics card. As far as hard drives, I, it's actually a really weird setup that I never would have expected as I was learning about hard drives. So I have three hard drives in this computer. And the way I was told, basically, someone taught me this, and so I decided to do it in this computer. So far, it's been working great. So I have three hard drives. The first is a one terabyte solid state hard drive where my operating system and my software gets installed. And also my VR games will go there as well. So it's always very fast and it doesn't get cluttered by the other files on my computer. I then have a second hard drive, which is a two terabyte solid state drive, which is my content creation place. When I have video files, animations, anything that I'm like working with actively in software that is going to be loading a lot of data back and forth and saving stuff, that's the hard drive where I put all of my media files. Then third is a four terabyte spinning disk hard drive. And it's just a regular kind of archive drive for me to put a bunch of files but it doesn't really affect the speed of my computer. They're just there for me to use them when I need, and they're files I don't use nearly as often, so it's like my Dropbox stuff. On top of those three internal hard drives, I do have other hard drives around my office, so a lot of backups. So in conclusion, I've talked about like computers in general, the stuff that's in them and like what that means. I've talked about the computers that I have had over the years, the ups and downs, all that information, but if you are gonna go out and get or buy or build a computer, here are some of the things to keep in mind. If you're doing 3D animation, that is going to be more intensive than 2D animation. So if you do a lot of drawings, you may not need quite as much power, but I'm gonna to talk to you 3D animators out there for a second. Those of you who are working in Maya for desktops, 
The thing that's gonna make the biggest difference while you're animating, while you're like doing the work in the viewport, is your processor. If you can get an i9 processor, that is like top of the line, newest thing, aim for eight to 12 cores in the processor. If you go for like full 16, great, but like that's probably as high as you need to go. Anything above 16, I don't think it's gonna, Maya's not gonna use it. Higher clock speeds in Maya make a bigger difference compared to the amount of cores. As for RAM, aim for 32 if you've got the budget. 16 is a minimum, and if you do a lot of stuff, then you may wanna consider 64. But again, you can always add RAM after the fact, so that's not a hard one to upgrade. Hard drives, if you can swing it, at least two hard drives, one for your operating system and software, another for your files. Solid state drive here for sure. Now if your budget's tighter and you can't do like double solid state hard drives, you can just get the one spinning desk drive and that's okay. Get something big that's gonna hold you over. But if you can swing the extra part to at least get your operating system and software on a hard drive, that's, that's the thing to do. And then a bigger one for the rest of your files. But either way, whatever you can afford. And when it comes to the graphics card, I'm gonna say that the RTX cards are probably the best bet as things move forward and things change, those are gonna be the, the cards best equipped to handle all the new things happening with our software. I'm working with the RTX 2080, but that's just the one I was recommended. I don't know a whole lot about the RTX series just yet. Now, if you're buying a laptop, it's kind of the same idea. You wanna make sure you get at least an i7 if you're doing 3D. Again, RAM, don't go lower than 16. If you have to go eight, okay, but you can't usually update the amount of RAM in a laptop. So I would go full 16. If you're gonna have this computer for three or four years, then divide that price by three or four. Is what you're getting worth what you're paying every year to have this computer for that long if you're gonna take care of it? But also keep in mind, technology changes very rapidly. Don't get the computer for the next 10 years because who knows what we'll be doing next year, you know? Now I'm gonna include links to Puget Systems for all their, you know, the resources they have available. I love my computer and I got it from them. So again, not sponsored, just honest opinion. So hopefully this video helped you. I didn't have a lot of information on these topics, so I'm hoping to just kind of share what I've learned. So if you have any questions or more insights that you wanna share with people, if you know more stuff about this stuff, please, if you know more than me, share your knowledge because we all wanna learn more about this. Also, feel free to talk about this over on Discord. The link is down there for that. And if you guys wanna be a part of the new animation live streams I've been doing, where you pick the shot, you pick the rig, you tell me what to animate and I will give it my best shot, head over to Patreon, link in the description for all that stuff. Now again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you and I will see you in the next video.